Hey folks, how's it going, eh? Um, I moved here from Canada in the 90s and I came from Montreal where it was all about language, English versus French. In fact, we literally had um, language police that would go and, and police businesses and if they had too much English, they got fined, they got shut down. So I come to America and I think, oh good, we won't have to argue about language anymore. And then I come here and it's black versus white. And you go, oh, there's so much conflict here, and it's, it's everywhere, they hate each other. Oh, in the north, they like them in theory, but hate them in practice. And in the south, they like them in practice, but hate them in theory. And then you go to a 7-Eleven, and everyone's just hanging out, and you think, this is what Thomas Sowell said in Black Rednecks, White Liberals. It's, it's, they have everything in common. They're the same people. They're all Christian. They all like fat asses. They all distrust the government. They're a team. So why is the media always purporting this myth, this, by the way, dangerous myth that starts riots and gets people killed, gets both blacks and cops killed, Hispanic cops, Asian cops. Why are they doing this? Because they want to control you. So I think, well, you know what? I need to stay here and try to fix this country until they can figure it out. That'll be my job. And then I think Trump comes along and I think, well, I'm out of here now. If Trump wins, America finally gets the us versus them, then I can get out of here and go back to my beautiful Canada. Look at this pastoral landscape. But uh, we still don't know if Trump is going to win, unless you're seeing this video after November 8th. But I realized when I saw SNL this weekend that America finally gets it. It was the most heartfelt, beautiful sketch, really a really great can't we all just get along sketch that finally gets it. And after I saw this, I thought, well, my work's done here. Check it out. So this was a, a, a black redneck Trump supporter, who, I mean a white uh, redneck Trump supporter who goes on um, uh, Black Jeopardy. Let's show him being introduced. By the way, look how good Leslie Jones looks with some hair. She's got to get that weird oven cleaner off her head and get a nice weave going on. <laughs> and Doug. <laughs> how are you doing, sir? Oh, man. <laughs> Doug, you should be ready to play Black Jeopardy. They told me a fella can win some money, so let's win me some money. Get her done. Get her done. Yeah, let's win me confidence. some money. Can you just... So that's, that's enough of that. This is what Sonny Johnson is always talking about with rap music. She thinks Jay-Z is Republican. She thinks that... And she's right. She thinks that rap culture and black culture is about bling. It's about money. Um, it's about... Uh, you know, making, making yourself rich. Let's get, make America rich again. And this is what's unique about this country where the poor see themselves as temporarily embarrassed millionaires. Britain, unfortunately, uh, is always embracing their working classness and saying, I want to remain working. Why well, you want to be middle class? Canada is somewhere in between the two. All right. Check out this next thing when they're talking about the iPhone thumb imprint. And I can't show too much or I won't be able to monetize this video because NBC is real territorial about their footage. I'm going to try to mess up the algorithms by going like this. Okay, go. 200. Okay, the answer, they out here saying the new iPhone wants your thumbprint for your protection. <laughs> oh, okay then, duh. Well, what is, I, I don't think so. That's how they get you. Yes! <laughs> Perfect. Well, I read that goes straight to the government. Okay. Mm. That is beautiful. Distrust of the government. That's what all lower middle class and down people have. And they should have that. America was built, the West was built on distrust of authority. And there's this thing with, with blacks that liberals have where they talk about them as pets. Amy Schumer got in trouble recently for doing some Beyonce video. And there all these white women attacked her for going, you don't understand the black experience. And when you see all these white people telling other white people what the black experience is, don't they sound like breeders? Don't they sound like, this woman is making chihuahuas and they're going to have hip dysplasia. That's not how you breed pets. That's not the chihuahua experience. That's not what you do with my Negroes. It really just reeks of disgusting like 16th century monarchies discussing paupers like they're some sort of toy. And that's what is so great about this sketch, because it's saying, no, we're all the same. We're, everyone is trying to treat us like toys. All these rich people, all these academics, all these pundits are trying to treat everyone else like toys, and we're not having it. All right, show the Tyler Perry one. This is them discussing Tyler Perry movies. Transport. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 
I got to tell you, I, I love those movies. I bought a box set at Walmart, and if I can laugh and pray in 90 minutes, that is money well spent. Oh, you know what, sir? I really appreciate you saying that. I like that. I really he gets a little scared. America is Christian, 75% Christian. The country was built on Christianity. Blacks are very more Christian than whites overall. Liberals are not Christian. You know who shot down the gay marriage bill in California? Blacks. And liberals hated that. It was like their pets had a mutiny. No, what are you doing? I want you to listen to NPR and have elbow patches on your tweed coat. Don't vote down gays. I want you to love gays. Well, they're not bananas about gays. And that's a, a whole other video. I think it has to do with jail and the DL, but I'm not as well trained with your pets as you are. Um, okay, and by the way, the establishment on both sides hates religious people. There was a big controversy with George W. Bush where they discovered that, uh, pre-WikiLeaks obviously, that he, him and his, his neocon upper classes would laugh at all the evangelicals and how stupid the Christians were. <laughs> They're so base. <laughs> it's a problem that goes across the political spectrum and it's called classism. You see, class is a problem in America, just like it's a, a problem everywhere else. All right, check out this last one. Skinny women can do this for you. Skinny women can do this for you. Doug. What is not a damn thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, that's enough of that. The, this feminist myth of body image and fat shaming and all this stuff. Us regular folks, we don't really care. I mean, your belly, it could be, even if a woman's belly is like that, we can work around it. We're pretty happy with it. It's just really a third breast in many ways. It's when you're ridiculously obese, we get grossed out, and we should be. That's unhealthy. You're dying. You should be ashamed of dying. Now, there's another bit in here where they bring up, they bring up Black Lives Matter, and he says, I got a lot to say about that. And they say, no, thank you, because white people can't talk about their things. So that was a little bit liberal bourgeois, because don't talk about my pets. But besides that, this sketch is amazing. And it was so good that I realized America and SNL, this bastion of liberal thought, finally realizes that us and them isn't about black and white. Us and them is about the establishment versus the people. And once I saw that it happened, I realized I can go back to Canada now. Hi folks, that was a Rebel Media short. I have my own show on Rebel Media called How's It Going? You gotta pay for that one. Check it out right here.